and welcome to your second lesson. In this chapter, we're going to talk about the structure and function of animals this time. Now, as we first get started, we're going to take a look at some of our pictures to answer our questions. But first, you're going to answer this page that we were just on that's, that's titled Animal Parts. So it says animals are made up of different parts that help them live in its that help it live in its environment. Put an X on all of the boxes that contain a part that could be found on an animal. So go through each one of these, mark the boxes that you think are, are parts that could be found on an animal, and then explain your thinking. How did you decide which things were parts of an animal? Remember to use complete sentences and to give reasons for your answer, defend your answer and explain why you think what you think. Once you've completed that, we're going to move on to our next page and we're going to look at photos of different animals and their body structures. Remember to write down at least three questions that you have. It's not three questions per picture, it's at least three questions total. If you have more than three questions, please feel free to write it down and make sure you're using neat handwriting. Now we have a couple different animals here. So I'm going to zoom in so that you can see them. So go ahead and take a look at the pictures of all of these animals and write down any questions that you have about them. So any three questions at least, you can definitely do more than three because I know there are several pictures here. What questions do you have about these animals? Maybe you have questions about their body structures, about why they look a certain way or why they have certain body parts. Feel free to go ahead and pause the video if you need additional time to look at these pictures. After you've neatly written at least three questions, you're going to read about the zoologist. Now, a zoologist is someone who takes care of animals. So if we go through here, you can see a picture of a zoologist at work. So a zoologist is a scientist that studies animals. They even study animals that have gone extinct and are no longer found on Earth. All right, now the next thing we're going to do after we've completed these pages, so let's go ahead and skip past these. So after you've answered the questions about the zoologist and you've given your best answer for the essential question, how do animal structures help them survive? We're going to move in to our inquiry activity. And this inquiry activity is a lot of fun. It's called put your best foot forward. And we're going to learn about how different foot structures help animals survive in their environment. So you're going to have a number of different materials that you're going to use. We've got safety goggles, plastic containers, we're going to need water, gravel, um, tongue depressors, which is those like little wooden sticks that the doctor puts in your mouth sometimes when they're looking inside your mouth, a fork, some tweezers, and some colored pencils. So for this activity, you're going to look at the different tools that we have, the different materials, and make some predictions about which one will be best used for swimming, which tool will be best used for picking things up, and which tool will be best for digging in debris to find food. So when you're digging between things like rocks and dirt. So you're going to write your complete answers over here. I predict that, and you'll tell me which one will be best for swimming because, and then you can say, I predict that uh, the next one will be best for picking things up because, and same thing for the last one. So tell me which one you think is best suited for each one of those different activities and tell me why you think that. Now you're going to go ahead and carry out the investigation following the steps. You're going to record your findings and your information or your data, as we say in science in our data table over here. So they've set up the data table for you. It says the type of activity, the tools that you're using. So you'll have the tongue depressor, the fork and the tweezers, and you're going to go ahead and fill in which one was best for digging for food and debris, for paddling through water and through picking up and grasping food. That means holding onto it. Shade each box in the tools column as follows. Use red to shade the tool that is best help grasp and pick up food. Use blue to shade the tool that would make swimming easier and use green to shade the tool that's made easier for digging through debris to find food. So make sure you're following your directions over here 
listing exactly the information they ask you to fill in to the table. Then you're going to color these different ones based on the question in number six over here or in step six. And after you've done with that, we're going to fill out the communicate information. So this is going to be where you share the information after the experiment is done. How did your prediction compare with your results? Were you correct? Were you incorrect? Were you correct about some of it? Tell me which ones and um, tell me which ones you, you predicted correctly, which ones you predicted incorrectly, all of them or none of them. That's fine. That's why we do our predictions and then we test our ideas to figure out if we were correct or if we learned something new. For number two, why do you think it's helpful for similar animals like birds to have different types of body structures? So think about different kinds of birds. Why is it important for them to have different body structures? Do all birds eat the same things? Do they all live in the same climates? Uh, do they all hunt for the same kinds of foods? You have a whole bunch of different questions you can ask yourself and think about why it's helpful for similar animals like birds to have a variety of different body structures. Once you've completed that page, we're going to move on and talk about our vocabulary for this lesson. So our four vocabulary words are going to be structural adaptation, internal structure, respiratory system, and external structure. So let's break down these words for a second. Structural adaptation. Structural means the shape of something. So the structure or the shape, we're talking about the animal's body. And an adaptation is something, remember we learned this in our last lesson, an adaptation is something that helps it survive. So something about its structure or its body that helps it to survive. Internal means inside. So something that's inside of the body. External means outside. So something that's on the outside of the body. And respiratory system, Respiration means breathing. So the respiratory system is how they breathe. Now let's go ahead and pull up our vocabulary. Now structural adaptations, we said are adjustments to internal or external body parts. Something about them, the inside of their body or the outside of their body that helps them to survive in their environment. An internal structure are structures that are found inside of an organism's body. Remember, the word organism means a living thing. So anything that's on the inside of a living thing's body. Respiratory system is the organ system that brings oxygen to the body, uh, to the body cells and removes waste gas. So for humans and a lot of animals, when you're talking about the structures or the organ system that brings oxygen to your body, one of those main structures or main organs are the lungs, right? That's where you breathe in air. And external structures are found on the outside of the organism's body. So something that's on the outside of the body that helps them to survive. Now we're going to read pages 72 and 73 in our science handbook. That's your textbook. And we're going to answer the following question. Explain why animals need each of the following, why they need food, space, and oxygen. So go ahead and flip open to your books and we're going to start reading on page 72 at the top where it says animals. Animal needs. Animals need food, water, space, and shelter to survive. They also need oxygen, which is a gas found in the air and water. While animals all have the same needs, they meet their needs in a variety of ways and places. Food. Food provides energy for animals. Unlike plants, which produce their own food, Animals eat other organisms. Scientists classify animals based on the kind of food they eat. Herbivores are animals that eat plants. Deer and squirrels are examples of herbivores. Carnivores, such as owls and other birds of prey, eat other animals. Omnivores are animals that eat plants, fungi, eggs, and other animals. Raccoons, humans, and bears are omnivores. Water. The human body is made mostly of water. So there, so are most other living things. Water keeps the cells, tissues, and organs in the animal's body working correctly. It helps animals' bodies to break down the food they eat and dispose of waste. Water, and dispose of waste. Water also helps some animals regulate and control their body temperature. Butterflies have body parts called have 
butterflies have a body part called a proboscis that helps them get food from flowers and fruits. So their proboscis is basically like this straw that curls up when they're not using it. And then they kind of extend it out into a plant or into a flower to drink out the nectar. An abundant water supply is important for all living things. Space. Animals need space or room so they can move from place to place, hunt for food, escape from predators, and build homes. Large animals need a great deal of space. Elephants, for example, roam wide open plains and large dense forests. Smaller animals do not need much space at all. Squirrels, mice, and birds have plenty of room right in your backyard. Orangutans move swinging from tree to tree. They need plenty of space to find shelter and food. Shelter. A shelter is where an animal makes its home. Shelters come in a variety of shapes and sizes and provide protection for the, for the animals that live in them. They also provide a place for animals to give birth and raise their young. Some animals, such as bears, wood frogs, and deer mice, spend many months of the year in a state of inactivity called hibernation. In order to hibernate, these animals need a safe and dry place to rest. Robins build nests that are high off the ground so they can eat, so they can safely lay eggs and raise their young. Oxygen. Oxygen is a gas that is found in both air and water. Every time a land animal breathes, it takes oxygen into its lungs. Some animals that live in water need to come to the surface to breathe air. Most animals that live in water take oxygen in from the water though. Fish do, fish do so through their gills. Oxygen helps animal cells pr process food and turn it into energy. Fish take in oxygen from the water through their gills. So go back and take a look at these different sections. Why is it important for animals to have food, water, shelter, oxygen, space? All of these are things they need to survive. Go ahead and fill in your answers using complete sentences. Then we're going to read page 108 and 109 in our textbooks to answer question number two. Explain how animals get the following resources, food, space, and oxygen. So let's go ahead and jump to page 108 and 109. Okay, here we go. Adaptations and behaviors. Survival in an ecosystem is a constant struggle. An adaptation is any characteristic that helps an organism survive in its environment. So it's something that helps it stay alive. Getting resources. Living things get the resources they need from their environment. A resource is something in the environment that helps an organism survive. An organism's adaptations are directly related to getting resources. So the reason they have these different adaptations is to help them get the resources and the things that they need. Food. Animals need food to survive. The shape of a shark's teeth and bird's beak are directly related to getting food. Plants do not physically move to get food because they make their own. To make food, they must absorb the energy in sunlight. Some climbing plants have tendrils that wrap around strong stems of other plants. Tendrils are adaptations that help a plant grow upward towards sunlight to be able to make its own food. Water. Water is essential for all living things. A giant saguaro's shallow roots are adapted to take in water quickly whenever it rains. They spread out on all sides of the plant, as wide as the saguaro is tall. A dog's tongue is adapted to fold backwards, allowing water to move across the top of the tongue into its mouth. Tendrils help keep a plant upright. This helps it receive sunlight. So you can see how this smaller plant is wrapping around the stem of this larger plant to help it climb up higher to get the sunlight it needs to make its food. 
The desert kangaroo rat is adapted to get all of the water it needs from food. It never needs to drink. Shelter. Many animals have adaptations that help them find shelter. Birds build nests in trees and on cliffs. Woodchucks and ground squirrels dig burrows. Beavers build dams on streams and build lodges or dig dens, dig dens in their banks. All these animals use their shelters as protection from predators and as places to raise their young. Space. All organisms need space to live. Animals can move around and find space when conditions become crowded. In spring, bee populations can increase quickly. If a hive becomes too crowded, a queen will lead about half of the workers to a new colony. Plants have their own adaptations to ensure they have enough space to grow. Some plants have seeds that float on the wind away from the parent plant. Others have hooks or barbs that catch onto the fur of passing animals to help, be carried, to help them be carried to other areas. Gases. Organisms have different adaptations for exchanging gases with their environments. Fish are adapted to exchange gases with the water that surrounds them. As the water passes over its gills, oxygen enters a fish's blood and wastes are removed. Plant leaves have holes called stomata that allow gases from air to enter and exit the leaf. Land animals take in oxygen through their lungs. Like gills, lungs have structures for exchanging gases between the air and the blood. So we talked about different structures that animals have to get food, to get water, to help them build their shelters, to be able to find space to live, and to help them use the oxygen in the air and in the water to help them survive. So go ahead and fill in using complete sentences how animals get the following resources from the two pages that we read. Once you've completed that section, we're going to go on to the section titled Animal Structures, and we're going to watch animal structures on how different animals' body structures help them to survive. We're going to answer the questions after we've finished. Now, before you start watching, read the questions first so you know what you're looking for. Number three says a porcupine has sharp quills. How does this structure help the animal survive? Number four, how does the pouch on, a female, on female kangaroos contribute to the animal's survival? So how does it help keep them alive? Number five, think of an animal that you know about. Describe a body structure that helps the animal to survive. So number five could be about anything. It could be about something in the video, if you like, or about any other animal that you can think of that has something unique about it that helps it to survive. Let's go ahead and open up our video now that we've finished our readings. Hey there, I'm Hero, and I love everything about the ocean. Did you know that all living things have different structures that help them meet their needs? A porcupine is a great example of this. Porcupines are covered with sharp quills. These quills keep them safe from predators. Octopuses have amazing structures. The octopus can change its appearance to hide from predators. Then, if the octopus is spotted, it will release a cloud of black ink as a way of protecting itself while it gets away. Camels store fat in their humps. This helps them survive when there is not much food available. Hedgehogs are covered with hard spines. If a predator comes near, they will curl into a ball. Female kangaroos have a pouch on their belly. This structure provides a safe and comfortable place for baby kangaroos to live and grow. Female anglerfish have a dorsal spine that hangs above their mouth. This structure helps them attract prey. Can you think of other animals that have interesting structures that help them meet their needs? All right, now that we've finished that video, you guys saw different parts about those animals uh, about those different structures that animals have keeping them alive. So how does the structure help? How do the porcupine's quills help that animal to survive? How does the pouch on female kangaroos contribute to the animal's survival? And pick an animal that you know about and describe a body structure that helps it to survive. Feel free to go ahead and rewind the video if you need to watch it again.
Next, we're going to go on to page 110, 111, and 113 in our science handbook to answer these questions. Explain what structural adaptations are and how they help animals survive. Number seven, explain how camouflage is a structural adaptation. Number eight, look at the image of the hummingbird and the tiger on page 113 of your science handbook. Explain how these animals' mouths are structurally adapted for the food that they eat. All right, so let's go ahead and answer these questions before we move on. Structural adaptations. Structural adaptations are adjustments to internal or external body parts. Fur color, long limbs, strong jaws, and the ability to run fast are structural adaptations. Some structural adaptations help organisms survive in certain environments. For example, squirrels have claws that help them cling to the forest trees. Moles have large claws that help them dig through the ground as they search for insects. Other structural adaptations protect prey from predators or enable predators to hunt more successfully. Turtles have a hard shell that protect them from predators. The spines of cacti keep many organisms from taking a bite. Long legs and strong muscles help cheetahs catch their prey. All right, so everything we read over here, remember structural adaptation just means they have something unique about their body part that helps them to survive. So it could be the shape of their beak or the shape of their hands and feet, the shape of their claws, uh, if they have fur or feathers, if they have spines on them like a porcupine, uh, all of those things are different structural adaptations. Structural adaptations in animals. Animals have many structural adaptations that help them survive in their environment. Feet. Environments and needs vary, and so do animals' feet. Cam camels live in the sandy desert. They have wide hoofs that allow them to walk on sand without sinking. Bats' feet have long curved claws that are adapted to clinging to the roof of a cave or the inside of a tree. Many animals that spend time in the water, including ducks, frogs, and polar bears, have webbing between their toes to help them swim. Feet are not used solely for movement. Owls, hawks, and eagles have feet that are adapted for getting food. Their sharp claws allow them to catch and hold prey while they fly. Camouflage. Camouflage is any coloring, shape, or pattern that allows an organism to blend in with its environment. Predators with camouflage can sneak up on prey. Camouflage also helps prey animals hide from predators. Protective coloration is a type of camouflage in which the color of an animal helps it blend in with the background. The Arctic fox and Arctic hare change fur color with the seasons. During the snowy seasons, these animals have white fur. During the warmer months, they have brown fur. These color changes help both predator and prey blend with the environment. Now take a look at the caption on the side. It says, the coral snake is, a poison is poisonous. Predators recognize its coloring and avoid it. Although the milk snake is harmless, Predators avoid it because it looks like the coral snake. So take a look at the two of these. This bottom one is harmless. It's not poisonous, but the top one is. Because the harmless one looks like the poisonous one, that's a structural adaptation that helps keep it alive. It's camouflage. Both lions and zebras that hunt, uh, both lions and the zebras they hunt as prey have protective coloration. The zebra stripes provide protection for individual animals, especially their young. When they are with their herd, the stripes all run together, making it hard for a lion to identify one individual. The lion's light brown fur helps it blend in with its surroundings, making it easier for the animal to surprise its prey. So for this section, Zebras, because they're all striped, when they're running together, it's hard to tell the end of one zebra and the beginning of another because they're all just a stripy blur. Next, we have mimicry. Mimicry is an adaptation in which an animal is protected against predators by its resemblance to a different animal or object. Okay, so 
So that's kind of a mouthful. Let's break that apart and see what it says. So when you mimic something, you're copying it. So one kind of adaptation that some animals have is that they're able to copy something, either another animal or an object to help keep it alive. For example, different kinds of hoverflies uh, resemble stinging bees or wasps. Their appearance helps protect the flies from predators. The fly's appearance helps protect, uh, sorry, the back of a hawk moth caterpillar looks like a snake's head. This shape frightens away most predators. This stick bug avoids predator, predators by looking like bark, leaves, or twigs. So mimicry is when one thing kind of looks like something else. And we'll see more pictures of that later on. Now on to page 113. Mouth parts. All animals need to take in energy to survive. The mouth parts of various animals are adapted to help them get the food they need. Animals have teeth that are used to chew food. Chewing helps start the process in which the animal's body digests food. Animals that eat different foods have teeth that are adapted to their diet. Herbivores, such as giraffes, have flat teeth that can grind up plant matter. Carnivores, such as lions and tigers, have sharp teeth that can hold prey and tear meat. Bird beaks are adapted to the food that the birds eat. A bird that eats large seeds and nuts will have a strong beak. A bird that eats smaller seeds will have a thinner, more delicate beak. Insects have a wide variety of mouth parts. Grasshoppers, cockroaches, and termites have mouth parts that are adapted for chewing. Their powerful jaws work sideways like a pair of scissors. The movement allows the insects to both cut the food and chew it. Butterflies and moths have mouth parts that look like slender drinking tubes, so kind of like a straw. The tubes uncurl to allow the insect to suck nectar from flowers. Some insects, such as bed bugs and cinch bugs, have mouth parts that look like long grooved beaks. Four sharp needles in the groove pierce the plant or animal and then suck liquid from them. All right, let's go ahead and return to our questions. What adapt uh, explain what structural adaptations are and how they help animals survive. Please use complete sentences and lots of details. You have plenty of space here to write a complete answer. Number seven, explain how camouflage is a structural adaptation. Again, complete sentences, lots of detail. Go back to your book and use your text evidence to help you solve. Look at the image of the hummingbird and the tiger. Explain how these animals' mouths are structurally adapted for the food that they eat. So if you go back over here, we have the hummingbird and the tiger over here on the side. There's your hummingbird and there's your tiger. Look at the difference in their mouths and in the hummingbird's beak. And then answer your question on the following page or on the, on the workbook page. Now that we've completed that, we're going to look at our digital interactive on how animals survive and use their structures to survive in their habitats. So we have two questions that we're going to answer here. Identify several internal structures that some organisms have. So several meaning more than a few, three, four, however many, just several of them. Explain how those internal structures help the organism to survive. So remember, internal structures are on the inside of the body. Number 10, identify several external structures that some organisms have. Explain how those external structures help the organism to survive. So let's go ahead and take a look. View the slideshow to learn more about key features of different types of animals. Click on the side arrows to move through the slideshow. All right, our first one is sponges. Sponges live underwater. Most are shaped like a sack with an opening at the top of the sponge. The wall of the sponge contains pores which allow water to enter the inner cavity of the sponge. Sponges filter their food from the ocean water and then expel or push out the water through the large opening at the top. The 
the jellyfish is a uh, the jellyfish is a nadarian. These animals have arm-like structures. These key features are called tentacles. Along each arm are poisonous stinging cells. Nadarians use these cells to stun and capture their prey. Most mollusks have shells and live in water. Some mollusks, like the clam, attach to an object and will live the rest of their life in that spot. Other mollusks, like octopus, swim and move about freely. The key feature of mollusks is that they have a mantle. The mantle is used to make their shells. Arthropods have several key features, such as jointed legs and bodies that are divided into sections. Some, like the crab and shrimp, breathe using gills. Other arthropods, like insects and some spiders, breathe through open tubes called trachea on their bodies. Most fish are covered in scales that protect their body. Fish have fins that help them move through water. A key feature of fish is that they use gills to breathe. Frogs, toads, and salamanders are types of amphibians. All amphibians begin their lives in water. Many will then live part of their lives on land. A key feature of amphibians is that they breathe through their skin. They have lungs, but amphibians' lungs are not very efficient at taking oxygen from the air. Reptiles mainly live on land. Unlike amphibians, reptiles have dry skin. Their skin is covered by, by plate-like scales. This strong waterproof covering helps them live on land. A key feature of reptiles is that they use lungs to breathe. Like fish, amphibians, and reptiles, the bird is a vertebrae. It has a backbone. They are warm-blooded. The key features of birds is that they have wings, feathers, and hollow bones. These features help birds to fly, but not all birds can fly. Mammals. Mammals are warm-blooded vertebrates. Like features of key features of mammals are that they have fur or hair. Most mammals give birth to live young, but some lay eggs. Female mammals produce milk to feed their young. Like all mammals, this deer has an endoskeleton or a skeleton on the inside of its body. The bones of the skeleton support the body and protect the internal organs. Arthropods, like this beetle, have an exoskeleton. This is a hard covering that protects the body. The exoskeleton goes on the outside. It also keeps its moisture so that the animal does not dry out and die. Mandibles are a pair of structures near the beetle's mouth and are used to grasp, crush, or cut its food. They are, they are also used to, defend, used to defend against predators. Beetles have their antenna, beetles use their antenna to smell. The deer, beetle, the deer and beetle, like all animals, accomplish the same tasks in a variety of different ways. Beetles take in oxygen and release carbon dioxide through openings in its exoskeleton, it's called spiracles. Deer take in oxygen by inhaling it through their mouth and nose into their lungs and exhale carbon dioxide. The organs that bring oxygen to the body cells and remove waste gas is called the respiratory system. Insects have compound eyes that are very sensitive to motion. Mammals have binocular vision with, uh, which allows for animals to judge distance. So let's go ahead and look back at our questions. Identify several internal structures and how it helps an organism to survive and then identify several external structures. So an exoskeleton is one, an endoskeleton is an internal structure. Having a backbone is an internal structure when an animal is a vertebrate. Having scales is an external structure, um, breathing through their skin, gills, fins. All of these have different 
body parts and different things that help them to adapt. So you can go back through each one of these to find all the different parts that we talked about. Then you're going to go ahead and answer those questions. After you're done with that, you're going to answer your I can statement. Now we're going to move on to our next set of pages. And here we have another inquiry activity called the structures of snails. You will observe how snails use its body structures and how it responds to change in the environment. Now for this particular activity, we are not physically doing it in class. I'm going to attach a video for you guys to watch how the snail responds to these different things in its environment, because if we bring them in and someone pokes the snail too hard, we don't want to hurt any creatures, not even snails, when we're trying to learn about science. So we're going to learn about it through a video on this one uh, so that we don't cause any harm by accident to any little creatures. After we watch the video, you're going to go ahead and answer the questions. How did it respond when it was touched with the cotton swab? Um, what was the reaction when it was near a wet paper towel? How did it react to when you added a lettuce leaf or when in the video a lettuce leaf was added to its container? And then you're going to label the parts of the snail that it used to move around and to eat. After that, you're going to describe how the snail uses its body structures to move, get food, and stay safe, and then use the evidence that you gather to make an argument about whether your hypothesis was supported by your data. So whatever hypothesis you came up with up here, you're going to decide if everything that you learned supports your hypothesis, it agrees with it, or if it's different. So for your hypothesis, says use what you know to make a hypothesis about how a snail will respond to changes in its environment. Write your hypothesis as an if-then statement. So if this happens, then I think the snail will do this. Once you've completed that section and answered the questions, we're going to go on to the last section for your performance task. It says, as a zoologist, you will use your knowledge of animals' body structures to design a model of an animal foot. You will design the foot to be used for the purpose you choose. So number one, think about the different animals that we've observed in the classroom or in this lesson. Choose an animal that has feet. Write the name of the animal. Explain how you would like this animal's foot to, or what you would like this animal's foot to be able to do. Brainstorm solutions to help you identify a pro the problem in step two, so how different ways you will solve it. Choose one of them and explain how you will make a model of it. You're going to draw it over here. Explain how your animal with its structural change would interact with its environment, so having this new kind of foot. How is it going to change how the animal moves about and lives in its environment? Explain how the change you made to the model foot achieved this purpose, then make an argument for how this adjustment would help the animal to survive, use evidence that you collected through this lesson to support your argument, and then we're going to answer our essential question. Think about the photos of the different animals at the beginning of the lesson. Explain how those animals use those structures to survive in their environment. Complete sentences, lots of detail because we covered a lot of information in this lesson. You have a lot of really important information that you can put into this answer. You don't need to do the I did question at the bottom or the I did statement. Once you've completed this, go back and check your work to make sure you did it neatly and carefully, and then study for your quiz on this lesson. If you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, I hope you have an amazing day. Take care. Bye-bye.